Here we are using the Cambodia picture part two. We used content aware in the last lesson. We're going to use hue saturation and we're going to give a new sky. We're going to use a layer mask to put a new sky in here. Also, we're going to use some a few new tools. There's so many tools in Photoshop. We're going to use this purple sky this time, and the attribution for this is Asuyuka Kimeno. Got this from um, Creative Commons. Uh, I'm going to turn that off, and then remember, here's the Cambodia picture, but I've altered it. But I still want to make sure that Dennis Jarvis gets his attribution, but I have changed it since I, I first attributed it to him. So maybe not for the better, but for my teaching purposes, yes. So I'm going to select the sky so that we can see the purple sky through here. Oops. So I'm going to go to the magic wand, because magic wand tends to work well with color. I'm going to hold the shift key and select a few things. And then a nice little feature under the drop down select menu is select similar. And it did select a bunch of stuff down here that we don't want. I can also see I might have to hold the shift key right there and right there. Sometimes it does really well. Sometimes it a little imperfect. But all the rest of this is easy to get rid of get my rectangular marquee tool, hold my option key in the Mac, on the PC, it's the Alt key, and there's our sky. I'm going to add a layer mask by going over to this icon here in the Layers panel. And there's the layer mask, only it's backwards. So when you want to invert colors, whether it's on a picture or on a layer mask, it's Command-I, or control I on the PC. Um, I can move my purple sky around. I'm going to go to the move tool. I can, I can, I, I've been messing around with it, so it's kind of distorted a little bit. I usually like to just free transform and, um, well, there, I'm going to, I am going to distort it a little bit because I want some more of that white in there. And there is a distort, except in free transform, except this isn't the perfect scenario. So we'll do more of that later. I don't know if it's in any earlier versions than the CC. It might be in six, uh, but I'm not so sure. I do have six. So if anybody out there is on six and can't do this, you're okay. Don't worry. Um, so I'm, I'm just sort of messing around, bringing it back to a little less distorted. And then I'm going to hit the check mark or the enter key on the extended keyboard. If you're on a, uh, excuse me, on a laptop, you can hold the FN key and hit enter. So there we go. We've got our sky. Now we need to colorize the buildings so it looks like the lighting was similar when they were taken. I'm going to get the adjustment over here, pull out the adjustment panel by grabbing the little tab that says adjustment. You know, remember this bar moves the window. This, well, there's only one here now, but you can move the separate panels out by grabbing the name tab. I'm going to get hue saturation. I'm going to bring the properties panel over here. And I'm going to clip this to the layer below it. We did that when we filled letters with a picture. Now, rather than make a layer mask, since I'm going to do it here, I'm going to go create clipping mask with my flyout menu. Or I can go here to the properties panel and it'll do the same thing. Notice it shifted right, and there's our little arrow again. So now I have to move the color sliders, and I'm going to move down this way to the purples, and I'm going to change the saturation. I don't want to change the saturation too much, but I'm because I'm going to it'll be look like it's completely tinted. I'm going to change the opacity a little bit here. 
Oops, oops, that's too much. There, we have to split the difference here to show that, yes, it, this is the, the light that's hitting this, but there's still some other color underneath. Let's see if I shift the saturation back up a little bit. No, it's a little too pink. Let's see if we can get, there we go. That looks right. I'm going, you can save your hue saturation preset. I'm going to um, do that right now because I'm going to bring in a sea monster. I'm going to put it in behind the buildings as we wait for the twirling ball. I'm going to call it sea monster dot ahu. I'm just putting it on my desktop right now. And I'm going to, here, it's a giant octopus statue. I've already cut it out, applied the layer mask, and I'm going to drag it up here till I, that lights up, and then I have to drag it back down for it to actually co copy into here. I want it to be behind the building. There it is. I also want it to be smaller, just a little, so we can see it. And I want it to be the color of the sky. So how do I do that? Well, now that I was able, not all color corrections let you save the settings, but hue saturation does. So I'm going to add another hue saturation. I'm going to add another clipping mask. And I can go up here to the flyout menu on the properties on the hue saturation, load hue saturation. Sea monster, open, and it will have the same settings as the other. I find I I think maybe I'll give it a little bit of a drop shadow. Let's see where is the drop shadow down here. And if I increase the size of the drop shadow, it just makes it pop a little bit. Let's here's the preview. Yeah, so that works. That works. So there's our sea monster. We used the various things. We used clipping mask um, and layer mask and saved our settings for color correction. And, there, and I often have my students put boats in the water and I've seen students put swans and boats and alligators and flying dinosaurs. So I like when I give an assignment like this for people to take it from the very minimum to really having fun with it. And that's that.